Hello and welcome. In today's video we want to talk about a day in the life of an ethical hacker. So if you don't know what an ethical hacker is, well here you go. Here's a quick intro into the area. Ethical hacking, also known as penetration testing, is a proactive form of information security. Businesses and organizations hire ethical hackers to help to improve their networks, their applications, their IT infrastructure and really protect them from data theft, fraud and whatever else could happen, like ransomware as an example. Hi, my name is Christoph Pütz. I have 22 years of IT experience. I used IT certifications to start a career in information technology. I worked my way up from help desk support to systems administration, systems engineering, to become a senior IT manager, managing teams around the globe. Before we go into the typical day of an ethical hacker, here's a 30 second overview of the work that an ethical hacker does. Then we are going to check out what the typical day looks like. An ethical hacker uses the same tools and techniques to bypass system defenses as a malicious hacker does, but rather than take advantage of any vulnerabilities or loopholes that these individuals find, the ethical hacker actually documents these, even provides solutions and steps how to mitigate these problems and to protect these systems in general. So now on to the typical day in the life of an ethical hacker. For this video we assume that the ethical hacker is engaged into an existing project with her employer. Her current tasks include penetration testing on a group of application servers. So the day in the life of an ethical hacker starts usually with email and looking at tasks for this specific day. There could also be a review of findings that were created overnight by automated attack scripts or systems running certain analyses and reports over time. So knowing that these are application servers, our ethical hacker will take a list of default applications that come as part of a default server build. So let's say you have a Microsoft Windows server system deployed and there are certain applications installed that come right out of the box with the system. So Notepad, a note taking application would be just one example of those. But our ethical hacker has that list. She knows what applications are installed by default and she will use this for her attacks. So the reason why our ethical hacker will take a look at those applications because a lot of system administrators really disregard the need to protect the system by potentially uninstalling certain applications or at least securing them down so that they cannot be misused. And of course, as you can guess, these applications have their flaws, they have vulnerabilities and our ethical hacker knows about those. So she will build her plan of attack using those applications as well as part of her overall attack strategy. Once our ethical hacker knows what operating system and the version she has to work with, she will narrow the list down and she will look for those certain vulnerabilities that will allow her to take control of the system as an example or to install an application that will then help her to take control of that system or to monitor the traffic that goes to that system. When our ethical hacker attempts to exploit the flaws and vulnerabilities in those applications, she will gain additional information and she will use that information to really fine tune her plan of attack. As our ethical hacker starts scanning the system looking for those vulnerabilities and flaws, she's also looking for systems account, unused web pages that potentially come as part of a default installation of a web server application. She will look for unprotected files and directories and anything else in that regard that she can use to gain an advantage to get into that system and really start that attack that she's asked to do. Security misconfigurations can happen at any level. So it can be the application stack, it could be the operating system, it could be just on the network services side, it could be a platform, web server, application server. So there are so many different entry ways and so many different type of application flaws that our ethical hacker is looking at. So there could be more than just one way to get into that system. But she will look at those and really try to identify the one where she can actually enter the system maybe without leaving a trace. I mean, that would be the perfect scenario for her. As you can guess, this area of her work day really requires a lot of creative thinking, strategic planning, knowing the different vulnerabilities and knowing where to go to find additional knowledge. As part of her research, she goes into the dark web forums looking for vulnerability information that other people are potentially selling or that is publicly posted. She will network with peers in other companies or security related organizations so that she can really develop that plan and then start executing it and documenting everything along the way. But this portion of planning and being creative and having a strategy sitting there, that is an important part of her day. 
As an example, Windows servers have certain roles installed by default, but others may be added. When server roles are added, it often includes dependencies, applications, or application libraries like the .NET framework that are not necessarily on the system before. And as mentioned before, those system administrators might just install the default with everything without then securing things down or deselecting the items that are not really needed. And that's what the ethical hacker is after. Our ethical hacker is using an automated attack scanner looking for those vulnerabilities. An automated scanner allows her to execute a large number of attacks within a very short time frame, or when it's really time consuming that she doesn't have to execute the task by hand. So this is an important tool that she uses during the day. And she's of course not just sitting there constantly staring at the screen. So these scanners will collect everything, they will alert her when she finds something. And of course, she's not running this from her main system. She uses additional computers, most likely virtual machines, that will help her to execute those attacks. So these type of attacks can be very system resource intensive. As attack and scan data is slowly becoming available, our ethical hacker will do the additional research as mentioned before. So this is an ongoing process throughout the day. Of course, it might not be that she just switches between work here like every five to 10 minutes when a new vulnerability is found. So there needs to be some structure in the day. But just be aware that additional research is just an overall part of the day in the life of an ethical hacker. So later in the day, the ethical hacker may attend several meetings, she may have to give presentations, or she has to give feedback and answer questions regarding a report that she submitted to the project team or an application owner. Back at her desk, she will spend some time evaluating additional data that has been found by the scanner or by other applications that she's using to do her work. For our example of the day in the life of an ethical hacker, our ethical hacker has reserved 60 to 90 minutes of her day for ongoing education as well. Ongoing education is so important for an ethical hacker. Understanding vulnerabilities, learning new technologies and ways to enter a system to exploit a vulnerability is so critical. And as mentioned before, she pretty much works the same way as a criminal or malicious hacker and she uses the same tool and techniques. So learning about those is very critical for her and she will go into the dark web to educate herself, to potentially even work with malicious hackers, even though they might not know that she's an ethical hacker. But she wants to know what they know so that she can use it for her work. So that ongoing education is super, super critical. Of course, our ethical hacker responds to email here and there, she, but in general, email is just a minor portion of her day. So there you have it. This is a typical day in the life of an ethical hacker. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so as well. And then I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.